YouTube, friends and family. It's Frank here again with yet another wonderful video. But in this video, I'm not gonna be showing you any patio villas or courtyard villas. No, not today. Today we are going to talk about a nasty little pest. Something that seems to be just destroying everybody's yards. Especially if you bought a house south of SR44. What do I mean by that? Chinch bugs. Today we're going to talk a little bit about chinch bugs and how to get rid of them and how to keep them staying away from your yard and how to take care of your St. Augustine grass. Because out here in the south, especially all through Texas and all the, in the southern region, we have a what I could say um, considered to be a inexpensive Southern St. Augustine. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In this little episode, we are going to talk about the Southern chinch bugs. Now, I'm sure everybody who has bought their home within the villages, especially south of 44 and all of the new areas, uh, even in other places too, um, the chinch bugs are notorious for destroying a yard. I could ride around out here in my golf cart, in my truck, wherever it is, and look. I myself have fought them, been fighting them. I'm working on the road to recovery. I've had neighbors' yards be completely wiped out by chinch bugs. Watched it. It's sad. People are having to resaw their yards. That's a whole nother story. But I've been doing a lot of study and researching about chinch bugs, the southern chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are known to be pretty much all over the continental U.S. You've got up north, you know, what they call like a hairy chinch bug, and then you've got different other kinds of chinch bugs and in the mid states. But out here, you know, Texas, Louisiana, all the way down to Georgia, all in the Florida, we have what are known as Southern chinch bugs. They love the Southern St. Augustine grass. Far often too many times for people who bought a house here in the villages, to buy a house, the grass looks great, you get it for 30 days. After that, it's kind of on you. Um, it's a good grass, and but it's not. Me personally, I can't stand St. Augustine. It's too temperamental. I hate it. Um, I feel like it's just a cheap construction grade, builder grade or whatever grass. You know, instead of putting in a nicer lawn, especially to maximize what I feel are construction profits they throw down this horrendous St. Augustine so what that means is as you as the homeowner are going to either have to one pay somebody to take care of your yard or two learn how to do it yourself far often too many people don't know what they're doing they're having a hard time taking care of the lawn I for one learned through my own experience I have some patches of lawn that I'm recovering. I've had to put down some sod a couple of places. I got an area in the front yard that's recovering. Now, I could go and drop some new sod and I may in a few places um, just to expedite things and cover up some holes. But I got a few other areas that I'm just letting you see how it grows naturally by treatment. So far, so good. Um, I had a fungus issue in my yard. I treated it for that. A couple of things about St. Augustine grass. I don't know if everybody knows, but St. Augustine grass is known to be a drought resistant type grass. It is, but it's not. Southern St. Augustine is not very uh, traffic tolerant. You know, say like a turf grass. It doesn't like to be trampled and walked on very often at all. If you're constantly going to got a lot of traffic on your St. Augustine grass, it's going to start to show. It doesn't like it. 
Um, I've seen many yards who have the St. Augustine grass, who hire lawn care people to come and cut the grass, and they they come and show up to your yard in this great big commercial equipment, the ones they either stand up on or they're riding in their zero turns, riding, cutting the grass. Now, I'm not gonna say this for every yard, but I've seen several of them. They're after a while with that constant traffic, you will see waves in their yard. And I know what it's from, it's, it's just blatantly obvious. <clears throat> that was happening with mine. I quit doing that. I went to a push mower that I cut four inches. Now my grass is flat. I don't have those wave, those groove impressions from heavy equipment. Three, the thing about St. Augustine grass is you can't overwater it. Most yards or any grass really, you cannot overwater it. And the reason being is one thing about overwatering a yard and not just because you're in the villages for water conservations and things like that, but when a yard gets too much water, you can risk fungus issues. Mushrooms pop up here and there. You can have yellowing in your yard. There will be signs that your grass is telling you it's getting too much water. Also, another thing is if you do not give it enough water, that St. Augustine grass will tell on you too. So you need to learn as to how to water your yard. And the thing is, is what's usually recommended is one, maybe two, three at the most, you know, where you water your yard. Generally, I set mine for like 15, 20 minutes, you know, per zone. Um, and the reason for that is you want the roots to grow down. You want the roots to grow down into the soil. If you don't, they tend to grow, kind of go out because it's not getting enough. You want to soak that soil well, out here. It's going to be sand, really, really, you know, that sand. So you want to, you're trying to encourage the roots to grow down and not so much out as all, as much. Now, when it comes to chinch bugs, and there's more on that St. Augustine grass that I like to mention too, but in reference to chinch bugs, since really with this, video is all about and you're going to see how one ties into the other um chinch bugs are especially prevalent the there you'll notice them um say july august september in the hottest times of the year um they'll be more prevalent in hot zones especially we you know where your concrete gets really hot that's why you'll see a lot of browning from the road or the concrete and they work in the way in now they can do it in any other area as well but you're going to see that a lot and some people may ask well why is that well one good reason for that is if you're saying augustine grass is drought starved you know water starved, it's not getting enough water they're looking for drought stressed grass and so a heat area like your concrete, your driveway, the road tends to produce a lot of heat. And if your grass is not getting enough moisture, it's drying out those roots and all that, and they're gonna go in there and they're gonna eat all that up and continue to spread. Once chinch bugs get in there, it's almost all over. The adult chinch bug, and I'm gonna show you a picture of that, what chinch bugs look like as the adult chinch bug. Then the nymph, you know, the babies, but they get into those blades. We like getting to hide them in the roots. There's a couple of tests that you can do to check to make sure that you have chinch bugs before you start throwing all kinds of weird treatments down because you don't want to mistreat your yard either. They get in there, they suck the life out of the grass blades. And then when they're doing that, they're pulling the nutrients out and they leave behind a toxin into that root and that grass and once that happens, you root, your grass is shot. You will see that root and that grass just get dark brown. I mean, just, just after a while, it just crumbles because it's done. You know, they've killed it. And they will continue to move about. Um, and they also will lay eggs, of course, you know. So adults have a little bit. So there's a cycle. 
So that's, that's why it's really important to make sure that your St. Augustine grass is watered properly. Also about St. Augustine, Augustine grass, I would recommend that you cut it no less than three inches, three and a half to four inches. For me, I, I like to try to keep it around four inches. The more substance and you know, the taller your grass is, it just discourages the bug activity in your yard. You know, there's less encouragement for that kind of activity. It gives it a better protection. Also, I make sure that your water system in the village is working properly. And I say this because I messed around one day and this was probably a couple of months ago and I changed some settings and didn't realize that instead of it doing it properly, it was actually somehow went into a um, an interval mode where my grass was not being watered when I needed it to be watered. It was actually working against me. I couldn't figure out why the grass just wasn't doing right. So I just kept researching, reading that manual in there, and I figured out that there were some things in my program that were not done correctly. Um, and that's my fault. Also, we're gonna talk a little bit about treatment of your grass right after this. Bugs. So just to help you guys out, uh, talking a little bit about chinch bugs, uh, I wanted to backtrack a little bit and talk about your St. Augustine grass as far as watering. It's also important to, to keep in mind that when you're trying to keep the proper amount of watering uh, in your St. Augustine to make sure it stays, you know, gets the right amount of moisture that your grass and your roots don't become drought stressed because that's what chinch bugs are looking for. Um, you also don't want to overwater, as I mentioned. When you go to fertilize your yard, you got to be careful that you do not over fertilize your yard because what that's doing is now you're giving them more fuel and more nutrients. You're just helping the chinch bug out. So when you fertilize your yard, I, I highly suggest using the, the right type of fertilizer for your type of grass. Read the instructions on it. It's important that you follow the guidelines to do it that way should you decide to do your own yard. Or, as what the companies around in the villages would have you do instead, is to pay them a monthly fee to take care of your yard. The way I see it is if you learn how to do your own yard, you do your own research, you could probably save yourself a boatload of money to do what you're spending all that money to have somebody else do. Well, what I've learned by researching and studying chinch bugs is to bust out that dishwashing detergent. And what, who, and what do I would recommend? Dawn dishwashing detergent, people. I'm telling you, it works. There's a little mix of a formula that I would use. but bust out the Dawn dishwashing detergent. Now you could use most any detergent soaps, uh, except for like palm olive, don't use that. Um, it'll destroy your yard. You know, some of your antibacterial soaps, me personally, I stay with the Dawn. You know, some people will say, well, I remember my grandparents always say, use the dishwashing soap to spray on the plants. Well, they're, <laughs> they're, they were onto something. There's a reason for that. It'll kill them. It kills stink bugs, spiders, all sorts of stuff. That's more of a, an organic method. But no, I'm not saying just go squeeze a bunch of soap and make bubbles in your grass. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. For those folks who don't want to make up their own solution, I highly suggest bifepharin, 7.9%. Um, there are some, these are commercial grade comp, uh solutions or pesticides that you have to mix properly um that's another thing too is proper mixture you know your proper mix to the water ratios and stuff like that um 
that'll knock out those chinch bugs and other things as well. But anyway, folks, that's going to be it in this video. I'll, I'll, I'm going to um, talk a little bit more about that kind of treatment. I'm just going to cut it here. I'm going to get to some pictures and some examples of some bad, badly done yards, but everybody's already seen it. This video is really for those who may not ever had a clue. You know, you've seen browned up yards thinking, oh, gee, they're, they're drought stressed. That's not always the case. Now, as I mentioned before, I just wanted to show you my St. Augustine yard. I have a few areas right in here. You can see where it's all dirt. I have taken out the dead thatch out, kind of replaced it with some soil, soil sand, if you will, out here in the south. Villages especially loads of sand around here. And I'm trying to see if this is going to grow naturally. And I could drop some sod in here to fix that. But I'm kind of deliberately looking to see how this is going to work out before I do that. I got a spot here, here. I got a few places that I cleaned out the dead thatch. So, but also I've had it all around in here too. So now as I look, for the most part, the yard is looking pretty good. Now, since I've been treating it the way I've been treating it, I've noticed it's starting to come back. It's actually growing and it's starting to go on. That's why I wanted to see how long it'll take. Now, I may draw some saw down there just to kind of finish that out and keep. I had an area right in here that's coming back in. But as I work on my yard with a consistent treatment, I've noticed I'm starting to get good positive results. Now on this side, that got messed up and all along in here, it took a hit a little bit, but it's coming back in. I'm gonna walk around here a little bit. And I did have some damage running alongside here at one time and since I've been treating it, it's all starting to come back in. And it's really looking a whole lot better, but it takes time, it just takes time to heal. Now I'm going to, now this kind of happened to the neighbor's yard, but let's see how it's spilled over into mine a little bit. And then I'll drop a piece here and there. The rest of this grass is coming in really good. So I'm gonna give it some time continue treating it. I had to fix my watering situation, which was a big thing, and get my grass cut properly, proper watering, and proper treatment. Now I'm gonna give it some time, and you gotta be consistent with it and maintain that proper treatment. If you let it go out of whack, it'll start going bad on you. So, as I continue to treat the yard, You can look around. It's looking pretty good. I still got some work to do to it, but I'm trying my best to keep it from the whole thing just being completely took over. So over time, we'll see how this pans out. Um, but like I say, I'm treating it myself. It's coming out really good and clear. I still have a few brown spots that I have to either, I'm either gonna fix or let it continue to grow on its own with continued treatment. I may just go ahead and fill in those spots just to start off good and continue treating it the way I've been treating it. But so far, I'm telling you, it has worked really well. Bust out the Dawn dishwashing detergent. That's just a little tip for the day, but there's also a little more to it than just the soakers, you know, but there's a little secret. Hello guys, I just wanted to <clears throat> quickly show you that instead of using a you know, a water sprayer, you can also do, you know, your hand pump. That's, a, I believe, is a one gallon regular pump sprayer. Uh, 
it's a roundup brand the brand really doesn't matter um the only thing is is what you do want is if you can get you a sprayer that comes with a the fan uh tip that way your spray will come out into a you know a rectangular i'm just give me yeah a triangular um spray that would be the best way to go and generally with this one only thing you're going to do that right here is a built-in measuring cup it'll give you the measurement and i'm not sure if you can really see that you know the ounce measurements is one two three four and everything in between by simply tipping this bottle over into that cup once you get your desired amount of ounces that you're going to want you just pour it out of there now those ounces are determined by your square footage in your yard so in the back of this this is a, <clears throat> a company that i had bought talak talik talak whatever um you also can buy by friend it these are all uh commercial strength as long as it's got that uh bifeferin i think that's pronounced bifenthrin <laughs> i can never pronounce that word but it's bifenthrin 7.9 percent uh now it doesn't necessarily have to be this company there are other ones and as long as it has that bifenthrin 7.9 that's the ingredient that you're looking for you know the company name doesn't really matter that's just one of a few that are out there and i actually ordered that from uh off of amazon now you can also buy like i said i mentioned in the video you can buy that um the water sprayer bottle um pretty much at any hardware store you can run down there to spar lowe's home depot and you could do that where you use water with your mix and it automatically sprays onto the yard. The Chamolean spray bottle. You just hook the end of your water hose to it, turn it on and you spray it on your yard. And your mix is gonna be according to the square footage of your yard that you're trying to treat. Well, anyway, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, I hope that I was able to help some people out there. Even if I was able just to help one individual um save their grass um it was all worth it to me um i enjoyed doing these kind of videos if you find any kind of value in this video at all or anything that i'm doing please click that like button and please subscribe to the channel i would greatly appreciate it the contents in this video is strictly my opinion based on the research that is already out there on the internet there are several other YouTube videos that discuss some of the treatments and the methods that I bring up into this video. If you're going to try these methods out, make sure you follow the instructions carefully. You know, the bifenthrin 7.9, that ingredient, just read the instructions carefully, do what it says to do. If you go and choose to bust out that Dawn dishwashing detergent, follow the examples that I have put in this video, just don't overdo it. Also, when you're treating your yard, you, you need to do it a couple of times or so. That way, you know, when you kill the adult bugs, you got to come back and kill the babies and the larvae as well. I think it's about seven to 10 days. You know, you got to, they do their recycling as well. These methods work and just don't overdo the ingredients and don't over treat your yard and you should be fine. But anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys with that. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next coming video. Have a great day guys.